Welcome to Alice Teacher TV. In this lesson, I will show you how to model a door handle. This door handle and this door handle will be modeled using some of the new Alias SubD tools, which is, for example, Read Topology tool and some others. So we have SubD Aligned Curve, we have SubD Bevel, and we have SubD Extrude, all in this little exercise. And of course, some old fashioned commands like surface fillet and trimming. So watch this. Let's start the door handle, switching off the old one here and showing you the canvases I have. The two photographs which come from the download area in this exercise. So we have the right view, of course, and, and the top view. We need the retopology tool, which is new in 2021. First thing it's asking for is do you have a scan? So we don't have, and that's why we hit the space bar. Second question is about, is there any sub D already? No, it's not. Another space bar hit. And now we get this little menu here on the right, which tells us what to do and how to work with it. And that means first I have to click. And that's what I want to do now. So I click all the points here around and be sure in the curved area have some more than more or less here. So just span across this gap because we need it closed first and then the last ones there and now for having quads we need a second row so that means we need four of them here and so on so that's important and we follow that feature line All right so be sure to have the correct amount but you can add afterwards of course and then we shift i can create quads one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on for the inner part i need additional points so i just continue and just calculating always it's i need four calculating the four and right all along here and I leave a bit of space for seeing the curve snapping afterwards and then we shift I finish my retopology sub D so that's the first sub D to speed up the video I will leave out the creation of the curves um, if you're interested I'll show you at the end of this video but now I switch them on I have them on the layer prepared already and these NURBS curves are used now to align our retopology subdi. So I go to align to curve and then I click on the first point here in the row with shift middle mouse selection. I pick all of them in between and then I say align the curve and I select the curve here. So now all these CVs are connected to this curve. Now switching out the shading a bit and same thing happens with the second curve. I pick the first CV here in this row and the last one with shift middle mouse button. And I say align the curve, align the curve and here this curve is it. And if I switch on shading, I can see I nearly have the shape of my door handle, the basic shape, of course. So I can pick this sub D surface on a separate layer and I can select symmetry on. And now I can pick the curves and scale them non proportionally, for example, make them bigger or flatter. And the cool thing is, Whatever I do with them, it's a nice flow of CVs. So I don't have to move around singles, CVs or vertices. I just work with the curves. All these curves are available to me now for changing the shape and playing around a little bit to get a nice one. Oh, I forgot this one. So let's just snap this too. Amazing. Look at that. Close enough, you forget some things. Shift middle mouse button, align a curve, then select the curve, 
and now it's connected so now I have it so I connect it to all three of them now I can play around with the third curve too so non-proportional scaling for example making it wire or flatter and it's always a nice flow that so next thing we need is the cutout so we go to the left view and then switch off the shading so in this case I haven't prepared the curve so I can show you how to do it let's say with CV curve it's an ERPS curve so start this one and then I click all along some closer points in the narrow corners then less points in the areas which are pretty flat and then closer again in the corner down there and now we do a septi so we create a septi from a NURBS curve with extrude which is up there let's see global extrusion I go to my curve and I want to go to this side of course and just check the options in this case because you can create two different results by choosing if you want to have a uniform distribution of your patches or if you want to have it more parametric like that means there are some more in the corners and less in the flatter areas which is I think the correct thing for my case here I go approximately to the width of this door handle let's say like that for example and then hit next go outside a little rotation would help probably to get it correct and because now with I do a scaling so need exactly the flow of these outer lines here so that means I just scale it in this direction that's the general direction and then I scale it just in Z direction and move it a little bit so let's switch on shading and the challenge now is to bring those two sub D's together without losing this nice shape so the nice shape is already done with highlights and highlights are pretty nice and so what I want to do is now to put those two things together in a new approach which is only possible in alias I do a surface fill it that means I have surfaces already when I have a septi so the only thing I have to do is just selecting the surfaces so one two three four and on the other hand we have that shape of our cutout one two and so on then look at the arrows inward outward and that's it and build the so trimming has to be set automatically then the trimming will be possible and we have it so that's all nothing else and still after this action we have the highlights in the same way they didn't change at all and that's the amazing fact next thing I have to do is to sharpen the feature line the three-dimensional line which follows the curve so I show you here we have it and we have that curve so switch off this one and it's the line all along here for that it's a good idea to delete the history and I go to the new history visualizer so it's in Windows information history visualizer so I have all the history which is connected to the sub D we have those three curves the bottom line we have that character line and we have the center section and this one this connection this is the one I want to get rid of and so I go there and I do a delete so now it's gone and I will do a bevel for that I switch off the canvases the curve and just suspend the rebuilding or the fillet and then I go to edge loop pick pick the edge loop all along here and I go to bevel so I can see what happens when I do a bevel here so I have to have to narrow that one and let's go closer to show you what happens so if I have the bevel and make it narrow or wider I get a sharper or a wider in between and if I add another segment then it's even sharper too and so I'm finished with this one 
So we come to the final steps. So it should be cut away at the bottom. So what I can do is just make a curve from there to there, extrude it. here and move it a little bit and I intersect the whole thing here and trim away the rest which is not necessary 3 intersection what I do is just selecting all the surfs selecting the plane making crosses with a window here and keeping so now it's cut away at the bottom and the only thing I have to trim finally is the surface here which is remaining so this is the surface and chain select should be on to the boundary it finds the boundary you, you set and keep it that's it so now it's finished I do the same thing on the other side which I don't show you because that's the same thing the right side is already prepared and another thing I prepared is I had created a curve so this curve is the curve which defines the gap so let's have a closer look on that one and I switch on the canvases and off the shading and you can see this curve here defines the gap now because it's a gap we need of course an offset for the whole thing so that means the smartest idea is probably just to be offset with the curve directly. I go close enough, offset it, and I have two curves now. I can take those curves and define a new sub D using the extrude global towards this direction. And you can play around once again with the settings which is divisions and parametric or uniform distribution so this would be uniform distribution this would be parametric so it keeps the shape better for with parametric and three divisions probably is good enough for this so i don't want to make it complicated of course and now we continue exactly with the same approach that we did in advance with this one uh, we do a surface field and I do that one quickly because I don't want to repeat myself too much and finally so we have it we can switch off all the controls we can switch off all the rest of this just to see the pure model so we toggle the wire and here we go here's our door handle finished and completely done I do it with CV curve command, which is pretty similar to the Retopo tool. So we need to click and then we create a curve so we can see the curve already. And having 
those points here all around. I get the first shape, which is not perfect yet, but to make it perfect, I switch on curvature usually. So I go there at curvature. And there is the curvature plot, which is defined by samples, a bit too much maybe, so let's say like that. And it has a nice shape. It's flat here and then accelerates around. And the, so if I move one of these CVs, I can increase acceleration, for example, around the corner here and also on the left side. And be sure to snap again the points at the end. So it has to fit exactly to the end point here and on the other side. So that in the end we have a closed shape. So that's a bit too flat. So I slide it a bit to make it a bit more banded here. All right, now let's quickly do the second curve, which is a clone of this first curve, of course. So I take the curve and make a copy of it, copy paste. And then I snap the pivot to the center, move it to the bottom and scale it non-proportionally. And then I move it to the right a little bit and rotate it along the x-axis. And let's check the top view to be sure that it's correct. Not enough rotated, so I need more rotation, more movement. So I go more movement, more rotation. Because that's the line I want to reach. So now it's fine. Third one is the bottom one. So we go to the top view again and sketch again, starting in the corner with the right mouse button going downward and then around the corner like that. Probably here the gap starts again. So one in the middle there and then we go all along come around again here and snap to the last point. And that's it. So now we have three curves. Checking the curvature, of course, I said I have to do it. Oh, we snapped wrongly. Let's snap correctly. <laughs> it just moved up. I didn't see that. Horrible. Now it's correct. And pick it, switch on your curvature. All right, so flat in the middle, accelerating. There's only one mistake. We have it to the wrong side. <laughs> cool, no problem at all. There is a mirror option for those curves. And also we need to snap it on the curve. I nearly forgot. And sometimes you get things. And in this case, I really completely forgot to snap it on the rail here it's the rail at the bottom so I need to be on top of course and so that's what I do and the command for it is called stretch curve here we have stretching so here's the command and control out and snapping on top of the curve on this side and the same can be done on the other side just selecting, snapping it. And now it's on the rail on this side. And as I said, it's on the wrong side for our topo sub D. So we make a mirror, do a duplicate mirror. And we can just delete the ones on the wrong side. 